Today I would like to go back to the year 1994 when early in the month of March the piece of Kauthu, a remote village near the district headquarters of Ali Rajpur in western Madhya Pradesh, then in Jhabua district, was shattered by a frenzied mob which had attacked the village with bows and arrows and completely destroyed a cluster of houses by setting them on fire. At least one person was killed in this violent incident that had been sparked by a clash between two persons. I, I remember the name of one of them. It was Dukalia, who was a resident of Kautu village, and the other was Vesta Patel, whose writ ran large in the tribal belt of Ali Rajpur, which was then a tehsil. Kautu village was linked with the outside world by a winding dirt track running through the fields. It joined the highway a few kilometers away. At the time of this incident, Kautu had a, had a population of about 1,000 and there were as many as um, 200 to 250 tribal families residing there. The tribals of Jhabua, they live in small clusters of houses made of bricks and clay. These micro colonies are, dis are distinctly separated on the basis of tribal groups, clans and subgroups like the Bhilalas and the Beels. In Kautu also, there was a similar pattern and the Beels and the Bhilalas, they were living in separate clusters spread over an area of about four to five square kilometers. Local strongman Vesta Patel, who was from the Bhilala tribe, was running a parallel government and was holding his own court for settling disputes among the tribals for several years. Being the head of the Ali Rajput Block Congress Committee, he also wielded considerable political clout and influence in that area. It was the first week of March, 7th March, when the Kautu resident Dukhalia, he had gone to Ali Rajpur in connection with some court case. While leaving the court, he was allegedly, reportedly confronted by Vesta Patel, with whom he had an old rivalry. When Dukhalia was surrounded by Vesta Patel and his men, he had put up a fight and he managed to flee after injuring Vesta with a falia, a sharp-edged weapon that he was carrying. The same day, Vesta's men, they attacked Kautu and destroyed five houses. Not satisfied with this, a larger mob swooped on the village the next day, this time choosing another cluster of houses. After looting the valuables and the livestock, the houses were set on fire. While five houses were burnt on the first day, uh, 20 odd houses were destroyed the second day and one person was killed in the second round of attack. After the news of this incident reached Bhopal, the state capital, I was then the bureau chief of the Hindu in for Madhya Pradesh. I rushed for doing an on-the-spot coverage. After a long drive with a brief stopover at Indore, I reached Ali Rajpur the next afternoon. It was 12th March. My immediate task was to find out the way to Kautu village and reach there as soon as possible since uh, I wanted to round up my visit by sunset. The first thing I did was I asked my way to the police station. There I asked the person on duty to guide me to Kautu village and his response was that there is no village by that name in that area. And then I asked him what about the incident that had made me travel all the distance. Again he feigned ignorance and said that no such incident had occurred. I came out of the police station rather frustrated and dejected and took my cab once more through the main road that passed through the Tehsil town with shops on either side. I asked the driver to stop the vehicle at a few of those shops to ask about Kautu village. Everybody said they knew nothing about that village and they refused to give any firm response. Every time it was a repeat of what had happened at the police station. And one thing I noticed was that fear was writ large on everybody's face. It appeared as if they were hiding something. After a short distance, I got down from the car, asked the taxi driver to wait, and I started walking. And as I went from shop to shop asking about Kautu and the incident that had occurred a week ago, it was then that uh, 
teenager, a boy, he walked past me, telling me in a hushed tone to follow him, which I did. And after a short distance, he turned into a narrow by lane. He was walking very fast and with some difficulty, I could keep pace with him. But I made sure that I maintained some distance with him. On reaching a certain house, he knocked on the door, opened it stealthily and he went in. Reaching the entrance, I waited there till it opened just enough to allow me entry. This time, there was an elderly person who introduced himself as the boy's father. He asked me to come in and immediately shut the door behind me. Once inside, he told me that the boy had seen me asking the way to go to and wanted to help. The gentleman said that everyone in the town, everyone is afraid of his life. And that is why no one was speaking or telling me anything. He was kind enough to offer me lunch and then said that I should drive past the police station and after some distance near the town's end at the outskirt, there will be a person waiting for me. He would act as a guide and take me to Kautru. In this way, I reached Kautru by about 4 p.m. that day, a week after the incident. The villagers, they were in a state of shock. It was Dukalia's father, Juwan Singh, who narrated to me all about the incident. He told me that it was around 5 p.m. on March 7 when Gautu was attacked by hundreds of armed men. He particularly told me that Vesta Patel's men, they had, they had shot arrows at one of the villagers. He was about 45 years old and his name was Ragla. He was shot when he was running away from the village. After he was injured, those from the mob, they lifted and threw him into Johan Singh's house after they had set it ablaze. Ragla was survived by his widow and four children. One of the villagers, he told me that the orgy of violence had pushed them back by at least 25 years. I still remember how he had pointed to the heap of rubble scattered all around and said, this is what is left of my house and all my personal belongings. He said that all the villagers have suffered. They've been uprooted, left without any shelter. Their, lives, their livestock was looted and the stock of grains and seeds had been burned. When asked whether or not they could identify those who had led the attack, some of them named one or two persons. When the district law enforcement authorities, they were contacted, they told me that they had not anticipated any such attack. Regarding the second attack which followed just the next day, the authorities admitted that it was a major lapse on their part. When the news of the attack had spread, BJP legislators, Nirbhel Singh Patel and Lakshman Singh Gaur, besides the BJP member of parliament, who later became the Lok Sabha speaker, Mrs. Sumitra Mahajan, were prominent among those who visited the village to assess the situation. After the incident, State Chief Minister Digvijay Singh, he visited Indore and called on Vesta Patel, who had been admitted in a city hospital. The Minister for SCST Welfare, Kantilal Bhuria, was on the other hand sent to Kautu on behalf of the state government to announce relief for the victims. Uh, now, Viji Dharmadikari, the district magistrate of Chagua, at that point of time, when I met him on my way back, he was rather dismissive of my queries. His immediate response uh, with a chip on his shoulder, and he said with a shrug that the government has already announced a probe into the incident in the state assembly. He also tried to brush aside my questions by saying, you know, such incidents are common in Jhabua during the bloody season. And around this time, the tribals generally resort to violence and murder at the slightest provocation. Revenge forms the basic psyche of the tribals, he told me. And he also said that, you, don't you know that Jhabua, you have a very high rate, high incidence of murder. And the collector went on to inform me 
about the action taken and said, you know, two of the prime accused, they have already been arrested. And in this way, he tried to wash off his hands from every responsibility. Local politicians, especially from the opposition side, they were of the view that the attack on Kautu should not be viewed in isolation. One of them told me that the violent situation was the result of a deep nexus between a powerful ruling Congress group and certain anti-social elements, or call them musclemen, who had been perpetuating a reign of terror in the Ali Rajpur area and the poor tribals were victims of extortion. The then Congress MP from uh, Jhabua, Dilip Singh Bhuria, he had reacted to the incident by telling me, it is unfortunate that atrocities on tribals, they had increased under the Congress regime, whereas the deprived sections of the masses, they had voted for the Congress thinking that once it comes to power, it would be working for their welfare and development.